Hi, I'm Billy from a small town in upstate New York. Before I continue, please hit like and subscribe. It was my 16th birthday, and I was finally ready to hit the road after weeks of intense driving lessons with my auntie Fran. She had raised me ever since I was a little girl, and we had a super close bond. <laughs> Besides her, I had my boyfriend Taylor, the hottest guy in school, and I couldn't wait to see what surprise he had in store for my birthday. I was all set in my Prada outfit, which I had bought after a year of tutoring. And just adding some finishing touches of lipstick with surgeon-like precision when I heard my aunt calling me from the kitchen like a banshee. I want to tell you, honey, that we have to move to London for my new job. So, so I have to leave all my friends? And Taylor? You'll make new friends. This is so unfair. I can stay here. I can stay with my friends. I can stay with Taylor. He loves me, and he won't let me leave. I won't be happy without him. I'm sorry, sweetie, but you're too young to stay here alone, and you don't need someone for your happiness. Don't give that power to anyone. She didn't listen, so I grabbed my car keys and ran out the door. I texted Taylor five times, but I got no reply. Famished from all the drama, I pulled into Doug's diner to grab some food. It was my favorite spot, but Taylor never wanted to come. He just didn't get it. When I was ordering, I spied my friends in a booth in the corner, but as I started to approach, my eyes bulged out of my skull when I saw one friend cuddling with my boyfriend Taylor. Taylor! Oh, uh, uh, oh okay, I get it. This must be your prank. <laughs> I knew you guys were up to something. Trying to surprise me and make this day special, huh? Well, I caught ya. Taylor looked at me with a look as cold as ice. Taylor, it's it's not a prank. Crushed, I just left. I fought the tears and gobbled up the food on the way to my car. And as I was about to start the car, someone knocked on the window. I figured it was Taylor and he was gonna come and beg for my forgiveness. But boy, was I wrong. It was just the waitress. Hey, you forgot to pay? Oh, no, I would never. I'm sorry. Here. This this is too much. You don't owe me more than it's okay. Keep the rest as your tip for being so understanding. I saw what happened. That guy's a jerk. You should teach him a lesson. I started to talk with her. She went through the same thing. Then I asked her if she would do me a favor by adding hot sauce to a plate of fries and mayonnaise to a vanilla milkshake to bring to Taylor so I could record his reaction. She happily agreed. Hey, someone ordered extra fries and a shake by mistake. You guys want them? Taylor grabbed it and started wolfing down the fries like he hadn't eaten in weeks. His eyes started to water from all the hot sauce, and he gulped down the shake, and then he spit it all over everyone at the table. Everyone was so grossed out and mad at Taylor, and I had video of all of it. I shared the video with Taylor. I could have made this go viral and embarrass you, but that would mean I stooped to your level. Adios, loser. I left the diner feeling like I had gotten justice, but it was really only temporary. I was still heartbroken over the betrayal, and now I couldn't wait to move and leave all this behind me like a bad dream. But even after we moved, my aunt saw how sad I was and she tried to cheer me up. Why don't you order a pizza and we can watch your favorite show on Netflix? I tried to be happy, but nothing worked. The next day, when my aunt called me to pick her up, I spotted a couple walking on the side of the road and it reminded me how much I missed having a boyfriend. I got so distracted that I didn't notice I was on the wrong side. I slammed on the brakes and the car spun around like some bad teacup carnival ride. I woke up to the most handsome guy I had ever seen lifting me out of the car. Easy there. I'm Henry. Are you okay? Prince Henry, please divorce Megan, and I'll marry you. He chuckled at the mistake, but he definitely thought it was cute. I'm not a prince, but thanks. I, uh, sorry. I was just... His smile melted my heart. He was clearly a little older than me, but I started to think maybe England wasn't such a bad place after all. It's okay, but you banged your head pretty good. I attempted to stand up. But I blacked out. When I woke up, I was lying on a couch in a huge living room. A man in a black suit and dark glasses, like from Men in Black, was standing with a poker face in the corner. I panicked and started blurting out questions. Who are you? My phone. I need my phone. Where's my phone? Is this a kidnapping? You kidnapped the wrong girl. I don't have any money. Do you think I'm famous? I don't belong to any gang or mafia. Why me? Wait, is my aunt a spy? Is that why you kidnapped me? Why are you not answering me? Who are you? He was just standing there, stunned. He put his hand in his pocket, and I started screaming. Please, no gun, no gun, please. Just let me go. I won't tell anyone, I promise. I dropped to the floor to hide from him. When someone entered the room, I grabbed their leg, which made them totally faceplant. Oops, it was Henry. Henry was stunned by my wild actions, but he stared intently into my eyes. I moved closer, but he moved away. Don't be so dramatic. 
No one is kidnapping you. This is my house. I was humiliated. This was like Taylor all over again. Do you guys feel like me? Never able to act normal in front of gorgeous boys? He sat down next to me and touched my head to see if there was any bruising. He smiled and I giggled. You should be fine, but I would suggest you get plenty of rest. What, are you a doctor? I am. Well, technically I'm still an intern, but I only have another year to go. Oh, wait, my phone. I have to call my aunt. She's probably freaking out that she doesn't know where I am. Your aunt was calling your phone, so I picked it up and told her what happened. Was she mad? More worried than anything else. I sent my driver to go pick her up. She should be here momentarily. He touched my hand, and I grabbed his hand back and held it. Then he turned my hand over and took out his stethoscope. Oh, I thought... I'm just checking your pulse. Okay, guys, help me out here. Is it me, or is this guy sending more mixed signals than a broken traffic light? Just then, my aunt burst into the room, and she practically knocked Henry into the wall. Billy! I'm okay, auntie. She hugged me, almost squeezing the breath out of me, and started kissing me a million times on my face. I love her too, but that saliva. Ugh. Okay, back to the story. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I'm just so happy you're okay. I'm so grateful how you cared for my little girl. Henry smiled and walked out of the room. I turned and snapped on my aunt. I'm not a little girl. How could you embarrass me like that? Come on, Miss Fast and Furious. We'll talk about it on the way home. As we drove away, I stared at the huge mansion and dreamed that one day I would marry Henry and we would be just like David and Victoria Beckham. Later at home, all I could think about was seeing Henry again, and I tried to think of an excuse to go back there, but nothing was available. Could I say I wanted to be a doctor and he could help me study? Could I say I left my favorite lip gloss at his house? Then my aunt poked her head into my room. I made a basket of muffins to say thank you to Henry. I sprung off my bed like it was a trampoline. I'll take them to him. I hurried past her to grab the basket from the kitchen. She playfully teased me as I ran out the front door to the bus stop. You sure you don't need a minute to think about it? Did she know? Did she plan this just to give me a reason to see him? I didn't really care why. Only that I was gonna go see the love of my life. Okay, the new love of my life. My plan was to surprise Henry in the mansion garden, and when he saw me, he would grab me and kiss me. As I approached the double doors to the garden, I could see the back of Henry's head. My aunt made these free. I stopped in my tracks because I realized that he was actually cuddling with a beautiful lady. Oh, I didn't realize you had company. They both stood up, and Henry introduced Wendy, his fiance, to me. She didn't like me and talked down to me just to make me feel small. Oh, Oh, hello, Billy. Henry has told me all about your harrowing experience. How adorable. You made muffins. I'm sure our workers will like that. She turned her nose up at the basket and laughed at me. Fiance? Uh, yeah. Um, nice to, um, here. I pulled out my phone, pretending to get a call. Oh, I better take this. Could be one of my many boyfriends calling. Uh, not that I have a lot of boyfriends, because I don't, I gotta go. I rushed to get out of the mansion. I was feeling like I'd never find my true love. Even the queen of me snagged a guy like Henry. Was I destined to be alone forever? I actually believed that my soulmate was a mythical creature existing only in fairy tales. With tears streaming down my face, I almost ran straight into a very handsome boy my age. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I get turned around a lot, and I live here. Are you okay? Why are you crying? He touched my face lovingly to wipe away the tears. And yeah, you guessed it right. I felt like I had found the love of my life. I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Billy. I was Henry's patient. Is he your dad? I realized how silly that sounded and laughed it off, like I'd meant it as a joke, which made Robbie laugh too. I was so relieved that he had a good sense of humor. No, just my annoying older brother. I don't have any siblings, but I can totally see how he might be annoying. Yeah, and especially with all of this wedding stuff. Every day, flowers, napkins, boring. We both <laughs> laughed again. Are you free tomorrow? We can grab a cup of coffee. Is he asking for a date? Before I could say anything, he took the phone from my hand and entered his number. As he handed it back to me, he caressed my hand and looked deep into my eyes, making me weak in the knees. But he caught me before I dropped. Man, that must run in the family. There, now you can have me anytime you want me. Just as I was about to answer him, I felt someone put their hand on my shoulder. It was Henry, and he whispered in my ear. Sorry about my fiance. She's very protective of me. I'll take you home. I need to thank your aunt for the muffins. Robbie got mad at his brother. Really, Henry? You left your fiance just to prove that you can have any girl you want for the taking? Don't take it personally. Some guys have it, and some guys don't. Two hot guys arguing over me? My ultimate dream came true. Aw, 
Are you guys arguing over me? As Henry and I walked to the car, I looked over my shoulder and saw Robbie smiling at me and mouthing, call me. I could tell Henry kept glancing at me the whole ride home, but I wasn't going to give him any attention. I kept thinking, does he really think I would date someone who is engaged? As soon as we got home, I jumped out of the car and yelled for my aunt in the house. Auntie, Henry's here to see you. After Henry left, I was sitting in the kitchen watching my aunt make more muffin baskets. Do we have more people to thank? No, I just saw a flyer and the homeless shelter is accepting donations, so I thought it would be a nice thing to do for other people. I helped her and we dropped off the baskets and I felt too calm and accomplished, like that was something I was always looking for. What's wrong with your face? Oh no, do I have a pimple? No, but there's this thing on your face that I haven't seen in a while, not even when you were with Taylor. A smile. You know, that happiness comes when you do things selflessly for others. I never thought of it that way. Well, I texted Robbie and set up a coffee date for the next week. You know, I can't go out with bare legs and arms and a mustache on my face because my laser appointment was late. When I arrived at the coffee shop, Robbie was waiting at a table and had already ordered me a latte. I don't really like lattes, but I didn't want to be rude. He spent the next hour holding my hand, touching my face, and telling me how beautiful I was. He insisted we post pictures of us on his Instagram, which I thought was romantic. I thought, this is it. He's the one. Suddenly, Henry showed up. You should probably go. You don't want to see what I'm about to do to his face. At least I have a pretty face for you to ruin. Wendy just agreed to marry you because she felt sorry for you. They started arguing and pushing each other, and it occurred to me, Robbie was just posting pictures to get a rise out of Henry. They cared more about winning the competition than they cared about me. They didn't even notice when I walked away. On my way home, I realized how right my aunt was. Only I have the power to make myself feel special. I dreamt of being valedictorian, making millions as a fashion designer, and traveling the world as a philanthropist, helping the underprivileged. Which, of course, is how I would meet my handsome, loyal husband and adopt my beautiful kids. When I got back to the house, my aunt was watching MSA with a bowl of popcorn, and I joined her on the couch. Did it go okay? with Robbie? You know, Auntie, I just realized I have plenty of time to find a guy. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on being kind to the world, and myself, and that popcorn. She laughed. I know you didn't give birth to me, Auntie, but you're the best mom I could ever ask for, and I love you.